Now we know that an ECM controls the engine, but it has no moving parts, right? Well, even so, we can still see it moving in real time with the help of a lab scope. Let me illustrate. We're going to watch a good running engine that has a substantial air leak and the PCM is trying to correct it. Let's watch. Now, as this paints across here, let me tell you why I'm choosing this. First off, we're at idle now. The computer said the problem was at idle and we're at idle. We can see that the oxygen sensors on bank one are switching. A good O2 sensor creates its own voltage and should repeatedly switch back and forth between 50 and 900 millivolts, crossing the middle point of 450 millivolts each time. The voltage should constantly vary as the PCM is making adjustments. And they're going down somewhere around 50, up over 800. Bank 2 is the same way. It's switching normally, going down to 60, up over 800. So it's pretty normal. Now let's look at short-term fuel trim. Short-term fuel trim reports as a percentage, with a working goal of 0% as perfect. It rarely achieves perfection, so it has an acceptable range between 0 and 10%. If you look right here, it's 19, 21, 23. Now an acceptable range is 10% or less, so this is too high. On this bank, we're about 14, 16. It's a little bit too high. But before we focus too much on that, look at long term. Long term fuel trim also reports as a percentage with its own acceptable limits of 0 to plus 10%. Long term on bank 1 is at 25. It's 25 and it's just holding there. That's 25%. That's pretty maxed out for the long term to be able to adjust fuel. The same thing on this bank at 25%. Now short term will not set a code. Remember this point. Short-term fuel trim will not set a code. Its job is simply to make fine adjustments up to its upper limit of plus 10%. If it goes above the plus 10%, then the long-term fuel trim sees that and begins to make larger adjustments. Short-term is the fast corrections to fuel trim, fuel adjustments, but it's not going to set a code. But every time that short-term maxes out, the long term will ratchet up one time and try and correct it over a longer period of time. If it cannot do it and if long term goes over 10%, it'll set the code. So, if you have a fuel trim code, it's because short term fuel trim and the long term fuel trim have done all they could to try to keep that adjustment below 10% and are now bringing it to your attention by turning on the check engine light. Now we're looking at this car with the problem. Our long term is maxed out at 25% with the problem. So what we're going to do, try to do here is interject some propane. Computer should see that and the short term should come down immediately and long term should come down over a period of time. So let's watch the ECM in action. Now keep in mind, this engine already has an air leak. So the short term fuel trim is already adjusting. It's lean so it's trying to add fuel and when I add propane I'm going to be adding even more fuel so we should see the short-term fuel trim immediately start taking fuel away as it tries to stay below that 10 percent limit. Now there is a lot to watch as you evaluate a waveform so I'm going to break this down for us and even stop the screen in a few places. The left and right are bank one and bank two but let's focus on the left. The top is the O2 signal, the bottom is the short-term fuel trim, and the middle is the long-term fuel trim. Many of you already know what to look at, but for those learning, let me point out the data points that you need to watch. Of course, the left scale is your reading changes, and the bottom is time as it passes by. Now, I want to point out and remind you of the initial complaint the driver's only complaint was that the check engine light was on, not of any running issue. Now remember, the ECM's job is to balance the air-fuel mixture, which it is doing successfully. The O2 switching regularly over 450 millivolts is confirming that, but it's taken some major long-term adjustments to do so.
Because it is successfully balancing air fuel, there is no running issue. But because the short term and long term went above 10%, the check engine light is on. Note the top wave, which is showing the O2 sensor, and it's switching below 100 millivolts and up over 900 millivolts. Now, if you were only looking at the O2 sensor, which is reading normal right now, you might be fooled into thinking that there was not an air fuel problem because it looks normal right now. But look at the short term fuel trim. It is reading a plus 14. So since it's above 10%, it is telling you that it was not able to control the air fuel mixture and that you need to look at the long term fuel trim now to see how bad of a problem you really have. And then you'll see the long term fuel trim reading of plus 25%. Since that is way above the 10% limit, it is screaming at you that there is a major air leak. Now let's set this in motion. When I add the propane, watch how fast the O2 senses it and reports full rich. Then watch how quickly the PCM reads it, interprets, calculates, and commands the short term to adjust. Here we go. The O2 went to full rich and the short term immediately starts pulling fuel away and the long term drops repeatedly downward. Now I take away the propane and the O2 reports lean and the short term starts adding I add propane, the short term pulls away again. Now here's a little exercise for you. I'm going to let this run and not say anything. Just watch it and you tell me what's happening and then I'll explain some more. We went full rich. So did I add propane? Well, take a look at your short term. Take a look at the long term. Oh, we're rich again. We went lean and rich. So am I adding and taking away fuel? Well, the answer to that is watching your trims, the short to long term. The long term right now is steady. It's just kind of holding. The number is, what, 12 or 18 or somewhere in there. But the long term is doing nothing. But look at the short term. It is adjusting. Look at the numbers, 20, 18, 20. But the short term is level, and so is the long term. But look at your O2. So I am not adding and taking away propane. The O2 is switching normally. It is switching above and below 400 millivolts. So the engine is running and the PCM is successfully balancing air fuel. But look at this long term. We're flatlined or we're just steady. That number at the top is 19. So the long term is a plus 19%. Look at the short term. It's a plus 20, 21, 23 percent. So the short term is adjusting just like the O2 at the top. The O2, of course, has a different range than the short term. But let's just watch both of these. Right now, they're just level. But the O2 is switching. So what's going to happen here? What would you expect to see? Let's just watch. If the O2 is switching successfully, that means the PCM is successfully balancing air fuel. So what would you expect to see? Well, these numbers are way above 10%, the 10% being an acceptable limit, so this is not acceptable. So we're, gonna, we're either going to stay level here or the PCM is going to try and balance. Oh, there goes the long term. It's ratcheting up. So the long term is going up step by step. So in other words, the short term was doing its best and it was balancing fuel. But since it was above 10%, it needed more help. So the long term has kicked back in now and trying to help that short term balance the fuel. Now the long term is level again, nice and steady. So in other words, the long term is making slow adjustments where the short term is repeatedly making fast adjustments. Now look at the O2. What happened? Well, I just added propane, so we're rich again, and that's confirmed by looking at the short term. The short term immediately starts pulling fuel away, and the long term says, well, you don't need my help anymore, so the long term is beginning to pull the fuel away as well. The O2 says we're still rich. We're still adding propane. 
and look at the short term. It's leveling off now. The number is minus 25. Your long term is a 7 or so. So the long term now is below the 10 percent. But the short term is in the minus, minus 25, minus 23. And then I just pull fuel away. Now we're lean again. Now you know we're lean because look at the short term. Boom, it's starting adding fuel. It would only do that if it needs more fuel. And now the long term kicks back in and it's starting to ratchet back up. So we're actually watching the PCM here. It has no moving parts, but it is moving. It is moving the air fuel balance to keep it in line. We take propane away, we add propane, look at your short terms, they're responding correctly. Now one of the keys to reading waveforms like this is not to make instant adjustments. Watch it over time. It's taking the PCM time to make these adjustments. So watch it over time. Think about what you're seeing and see if it's responding appropriately. Now again, the O2 is switching normally. The short term is balancing, it's steady, and the long term was climbing, so it's adding fuel, but it's steady. It's going to stay steady for a while. Now one other point here. The short term is going to respond immediately. It de the long term will respond, but not necessarily immediately. It depends on the size of the air leak. In this case, we got a big air leak, so the long term is going to kick in real fast. If you happen to have an air leak that was pretty small, you might watch the O2 switch like this in the short term stay level, and it may take that long term several seconds or even minutes to begin to kick in. It again, depends on how big the leak is. Now in this case, this data is telling me that I've got a substantial air leak. If I was seeing the same thing, but the long term took a long, lot longer to respond, then I'd immediately begin thinking, well, yeah, I have an air leak, but it's probably a pretty small one. And that'll make a difference on how and where you're going to look for your leak. We've been watching the PCM working in real time to correct a real time air leak. Now let's watch the same PCM working in real time again after the repair has been made. Again, now this is after the repairs have been made. The top is the O2 sensor. And look, it's switching regularly, dropping down to almost zero and going up to a little above 900. So it's doing fine. The bottom trace is the short-term fuel trim. And if, I know the numbers are a little hard to see, but notice that it's on the left bank about 2%, and on the right bank it's at zero. The middle line now is the long-term fuel trim. And look at it, it's about 4 on the left bank and about zero again on the right bank. So the PCM is doing a fine job here. It's using short term to make fine adjustments and then long term doesn't have to do hardly anything and we're keeping it in good air fuel mixture.